it's been a month and throughout this month of not uploading a video about God every day I found that my relationship with God has gotten kind of dry um, or at least felt like I was in a dry season with the Lord um, and I, I do think it's because when I would post the videos talking about Jesus um, I would read my Bible knowing that it was because I wanted to post a video and I felt like I needed to get closer with God I needed to read my Bible so I could post this video and have it be biblically accurate and if there's something that I felt that Holy Spirit was going to speak to me through it would be the Bible so that's what I did and then I'd make a video and I'd feel like whew I did what I need to do I can enjoy the rest of my day doing it how I want to do it um, if I read the Bible more, awesome. If not, that's fine. I already did what I needed to do to spend time with God through my day. I found that since taking, you know, feeling like it was okay to take a step back from posting every day, um, I didn't really feel a yearning to read my Bible anymore. I didn't have that same zip and, like, desire to. I really didn't have much of a desire to read my Bible at all. I would barely read it, um, sometimes think that it wasn't necessary because I already knew what I was going to read, like the story I was going to read is just rereading that I've already read. I just felt like it, there wasn't a purpose and it was hard for me to get back into reading the word and to even want to read the word. I did want to feel closer to God, but I just didn't feel close to God. and. That was really hard. Um, but yeah, I guess kind of just I've been with God's help navigating what a relationship with God looks like just because I want to have a relationship with God. Not because I feel like I need to or because there's like a greater purpose to it, just because I love God. He created me. I'm made to have a relationship with him and I just want to know more about the Lord um, and this all kind of came to me today um, as I've been having a lot of fun with my life recently I've been hanging out with friends a lot more which has been so fun um, I call my license which has been really cool too a little nerve-wracking but very exciting um, yeah, just trying to be a light the best that I can, um, but then just figuring out what a relationship with God looks like and how I want to spend time with God and when I want to spend time with God and kind of trying to get off my phone more, which has been a struggle. But today, I opened my Bible for the first time in a few days, and I just read some of John, and literally within the first few minutes of reading, I instantly felt God's love and his peace, his presence, which I have not felt for a while. And so beautiful after that I went on a walk with my dog and I listened to worship music and I talked to God a lot of the time too and it was just beautiful I've been missing that feeling of the Lord for a while now it's been so nice just to bask in his presence and praise him he is so worthy of our praise and it was so just wonderful to feel God again. Um, and yeah, I, I, I was talking to my uncle about this. He's a youth leader. Um, and he was, I was telling him, opening up to him about how I don't really feel very close to God and I just don't feel God's presence. And he was saying, 
And that's kind of what happens when you are close with God, is he'll put you through dry seasons. And I don't know why he does it, but, you know, he's saying, oh, he's been in dry seasons of his life with faith for a while, but that's when you just have to go back to scripture and just read the scriptural truth that God is always with us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. He has a plan to prosper us and not to harm us. And that, you know, if you walk through the valley, he'll be there. If I go down to the depths, he'll be there. He's always with us. Like his spirit, I have Holy Spirit in my heart. He has Holy Spirit in his heart. Holy Spirit's always with us. And there's so much going around that we don't see. And yeah, just to not lean on our own understanding. Just trust in God. He's always, he's always with us. Even we don't feel him or see him, he's always there. And that was a really great reminder from my uncle. Um, Cause it was hard to not feel God's presence, but he's always there, always. You know, even when I read the Bible before today, I just didn't feel God's presence. I didn't really feel anything from it. But I did today, and it's nothing more or less than I did. It's simply just taking that step, opening the word. And sometimes God will speak to you through it. Sometimes he won't. Sometimes you're just in a dry season, and that's normal. But it is. Um, I don't think we really talk about it too much, but it is normal. It's not that God's left you. It's not that he thinks horribly of you it's just that you're probably in a season of testing um you know in james my uncle also talked about this he talked about james james says in the book of james that the testing of our faith produces perseverance let perseverance make its full marks that we will be like confident and assured and courageous in faith How are you supposed to have a strong faith and strong foundation with God if everything in your life is going perfect? If you always are feeling God's presence, what's going to happen when you don't? You know, you're probably going to be like, oh my word, ah, this is awful. But it's not. Because God's always there. Whether you feel his presence or not, he's just always there. He's omnipresent. Um, but yeah. If I could give you, watching this video, any sort of message or encouragement, it would be to have a relationship with God because you want to have a relationship with God. Not because you feel like you have to or because everyone else is doing it or because you just feel judged if you don't do it because you want Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. You want to give your life to God, surrender it to him and have him be the light of your life. The reason you wake up every morning is because it's his breath in your lungs, you know, living a life for God, you know, not for your own personal gain, but for God's glory. Make time for the Lord because he's done so much for you and he deserves your time. Do it for yourself, not for anybody else, because it is a, it's a personal relationship with Jesus. You don't have a relationship with God just because your parents have a relationship with God, or just because you go to church, or just because you've been baptized when you were young. Just because your friends know about Jesus doesn't mean you automatically know about Jesus. It is a personal relationship. It is an everyday choice to follow Jesus and to get closer with him, to spend time reading the Bible, to spend time in prayer, to worship the Lord, to give him praise, to have a life replicate as best as our own ability on earth, the life of Jesus when he was on earth. You know, it's having a relationship with God in Christianity to me really means just surrendering your life and your dreams and your own desires for yourself to do the work that God has called you to do, to be set apart from this world, 
set apart from your family's line of careers, your family's own beliefs about you, your friend's own expectations about you, set apart from it because you were born again. When you ask Jesus into your heart, you have been born again into the kingdom of heaven. And then you don't belong to the world anymore. Heaven is your home. The earth is simply temporary. And that's really exciting. Um, but yeah, it's given up your life to live for God. The life he wants you to live following his will and plan and desires and hopes for your life. And I promise you, once you do that, you're going to be like, wow, this is so much better than what I could have ever imagined or wanted. Because he is your heavenly father and you are his beautiful child. And he has the best interest for you at heart. And he's not going to take you through something you cannot handle. Um, yeah, he just loves you. And like a father loves his child or should love their child. He's gonna bless you and he's gonna, you know, he's gonna spoil you a little bit. But you just gotta take that step and he'll come running. You're not alone. And God just loves you so much. Like a lot. But yeah. Seek Jesus because you wanna seek Jesus. Not because of any other reason, but your own personal choice. Nobody else's, your own personal choice. Because you're going to be judged when the end time happens. When Jesus comes on judgment day, you are going to be judged for the works you've done for God on earth and how you've lived your life. You. You. Not you and your parents, not you and your friends, not you and your pastor, you alone, you and Jesus. So it is a personal relationship, not based on what anybody else is telling you to do, but your own beautiful decision to follow God the rest of your life and give your life to him. It's so worth it. I can promise you that. But don't wait. Make that choice. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to have everything figured out. Please do not wait till you have everything figured out. Just do it. Right here, right now. You can even just repeat after me. Say, Lord, I admit that I am a sinner and I need you. God, I've made mistakes and I don't know where this life could lead me. But God, right now I just choose to follow you. I give my life to you and I lay it at your feet. Please forgive me of my sins. And cleanse me with your blood, Jesus. Holy Spirit, please come into my heart and fill me up. I give my life to you, God. I lay it completely at your feet. Have your way with my life, Lord. Have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. You just made the best decision ever. I'll see you at some point. God bless you.